Nerd Nerds, today we are not looking at something from the Japan Hall. We're actually checking out something from the Big Wish Hall. We're checking out the Paul Rubens watercolors. So keep watching. So today we're taking a look at these Paul Rubens watercolors that were ordered during the Big Wish Hall. When I ordered them, they were not described as Paul Rubens watercolors. I don't know if they are knockoff or gray market or what. All I know is I got them from Wish. I'll link the actual product in the description below so you guys can take a look. This is our swatch and unbox. So our unbox and swatch. So we've got our box and I've got paper to do our swatch. So the outside, these are actually really nicely packaged in sort of a matte finished cardboard box. Artist transparent watercolor, fine artist watercolors. Um, let's see, Paul Rubens, Paul Rubens. Same thing on the other side. Inside is actually a really nice protective cloth, like a cloth carrying case. And then check this out. So this is like almost the same case as the, oh, I think the Meaden case is trying to knock this off. So I bought a cheap Meaden case on Amazon to house my Holbein watercolors in. Um, and uh, it offered me pink or blue and I went with pink. And this is almost the same case as the Paul Rubens case from Wish. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull this out of its nice, safe, snug home. So it's got a little bit of a wrapping pouch, help keep it safe. Inside is one watercolor palette. Well, you know what I mean. So we have here, swatches of all the color, can't get it open, I'm so sorry guys, of all the colors that are available in this range, and they're quite a lot. And then I'm not really sure what this is all about, but maybe one of you guys can help me out with this. Since it was ordered from Wish, the provenance is pretty dubious. Then on the inside, there's a swatch card, and this is on pretty decent watercolor paper. I mean, it's not the best watercolor paper ever, but it's got a texture to it, and it's better than some of the stuff I've been given in like the Jane Davenport boxes. Then we further unfold, and it wants, I think it got stuck. And we've got all of our lovely, tasty watercolor pants, and they're all still wrapped. And there's, I think there's 24 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 24 of them. And they have the English names as well as I would assume the Chinese names. But again, if you guys recognize any of this, I would appreciate your help. So I'm going to unwrap one of these candies. I mean, watercolor pans. I'm gonna unwrap one of these on camera for you guys, and then I will unwrap the rest off camera because this could take all night. So this is where quality's a little dubious. It looks like it's shrink wrapped around it, kind of. I'm uh, not super sure how I'm gonna be able to open these. Wouldn't it be hilarious if there was like, <laughs> nothing inside and I was truly wish duped or I don't know it was made of like swimsuit material or some of the other wish hacks oh okay all right so it's pretty it's actually pretty simple it's just a sticker here I'm, here I was thinking it was like shrink wrapped or something and it's just a sticker oh okay all right and it's just like poured right in there so what I'm gonna do it's gonna, I'm just gonna ruin my evening. I'm gonna cut the, um, the information from the top. This'll only take like three years to finish. I'm gonna cut the information from the top and hopefully stick it on the bottom. There'll be some overlap. Oh, hey, oh, aren't I smart? Okay, so this is permanent lemon yellow. So I'm gonna do this with all 24 of these colors. And then I'll check back in with you guys. So while I assemble this set, I did a little bit of research and I'll probably continue to do a little bit of research as I assemble. So Paul Rubens is actually a legitimate Chinese brand of paint. 
And uh, there's some information about them on Wet Canvas, which is a watercolor forum. And it's actually a very, I mean, it's a really helpful resource. I check them all the time when I'm writing blog posts that are more in depth than some of these videos. Now, the sample they showed, it was, okay, so the real Paul Rubens, we're not sure if this is the real Paul Rubens, but the real Paul Rubens is made by Shanghai Alwyn Art Materials. Um, they do send out sample cards, but they it's limited to 300 samples. So if you want sample cards, you're gonna have to get on that fast. And according to the official information, there is no ox gall. Now, ox gall is usually used as like a flow or a wetting agent in watercolor. I haven't encountered too many watercolors that include, that I know of that include ox gall. Like it's not listed in the same way gum Arabic. It's usually when, when watercolors have like other types of additives, it usually just says fillers. Um, so it can sometimes be difficult to find out what is what exactly is in your watercolor. And sometimes you just have to use your best knowledge to figure that out. There are series A through F, which makes for six different series. And they're available in 15 milliliter tubes, half pans and full pans with the 15 milliliter tubes starting at 192 and kind of topping out at 769. The half pans starting at 144 and topping out at 490. And the full pans starting at 256 and uh, for the highest one that has information, it's $5.60. So they're fairly inexpensive watercolors. Now, I've noticed that uh, Asian watercolors tend to like like stuff but made by like Shin Han, Japanese brands, that sort of stuff. They tend to be, if you can find it in the US, they tend to be um, a little cheaper than what they're actually truly worth. Now to be, well, compared to US brands, I should say. Um, in Japan, for at least, watercolors are a little less expensive than they would be here anyway, because they're um, a little easier to come by. Um, it's not seen as, and I don't mean to slam watercolor, y'all should know I love watercolor and I paint like every single day. Um, but here in the US, it's kind of a niche hobby, like maybe one in 10 people do it. Whereas in some other countries, people enjoy the arts more frequently and don't seem to have a problem with just painting and drawing for enjoyment. So in other countries, you can often get art supplies at a lower price because there's more ma market saturation and there's more competition than what we have in the US. Over on wet canvas, a lot of the complaints seem to stem that uh, they don't believe these are true pigments because the colors are too bright. I can't vouch for that. I can say that when you've worked with Western watercolors for a long time, you get kind of used to playing around with dull, desaturated colors. Um, and that Asian watercolors are typically a little brighter, more colorful. Um, tend to have a little more vibrancy to them. And as I stated before, it can be really difficult sometimes to actually find um, product information about art supplies here in the US. I do know that Magello, which is a Korean company, has some beautiful, bright, intense colors and many of their, or they have a single pigment line. So I do know that at least one brand is using pigments rather than dyes a lot of speculation as to whether or not these are artist grade watercolors. Um, like I said, I got these on Wish. I don't even know if these are the true Paul Rubens watercolors. In this instance, I'm not going to speculate until I've really had a chance to play with them. But I am, even if it's through a site like Wish, I'm really excited to see art supplies from other countries finally becoming somewhat available in the US. I was becoming very frustrated with what I had on offer at Blick and at Jerry's. And it's not that their selection is terrible, it's that compared to other countries, <laughs> their selection is terrible. But again, there just isn't the demand in this country for the variety as there would be in other countries. So it looks like in the US, looks like there isn't a proper distributor for Paul Rubens watercolor. I'm seeing 
offerings on eBay. I'm seeing offerings on AliExpress. And like I told you guys, I got mine off of Wish. So um, take that as you will. We haven't even swatched these, so I'm trying not to make too many assumptions. And I was impressed by the packaging at least. When I search Wish for Paul Rubin though, nothing's really coming up. Let me try again. Paul Rubin's, not just reproductions of paintings. Wish has this listed as 24 colors, professional, portable, plastic box, solid watercolor painting set for artists. Let me click that and see the whole thing. Uh, for artist watercolor art drawing supplies, and I did pay 33 USD for this, for this set, which for a good quality 24 piece watercolor set is a steal. For student quality, I have enough student quality sets, I really wouldn't pay that. So it was not, it is not plastic, it is indeed metal. Um, and it looks like they have, it's available in pink or blue size, just like those Meaden sets. I wonder, I wonder if Meaden was knocking off Paul Rubens for this. And if I bought it with other shoppers, I would have paid $29.50. And most of the Wish reviews, which I take with a grain of salt, say that the size was just right, which is great because I, I don't know how the size, whatever, I'm sure there's people nitpicky enough that uh, you wouldn't be able to please even them. And I'm not seeing any written re reviews for this product. So, I definitely, this is definitely nicer than what I thought I was going to receive, but it's also a bit of a mystery. So I'm really excited to get finished with this eternal sticker peeling and start swatching these. Now I'm honestly kind of surprised that the adhesive isn't sticking more to the paint than it is. And I'm also kind of surprised that more of the paint isn't just coming off onto the sticker. And every one of these little half pans has this super cute little barcode. Although I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing like light fast, sorry, light fastness information on these. Um, that might be available in the booklet. I know Daniel Smith doesn't put their light fast information on every single product, but they have light fast information available for every single product. And honestly, I know, I know I have reviewed uh, watercolors made in China, and I know I have probably reviewed <laughs> uh, cheap watercolors from China, and I've probably even gotten a few knockoffs especially playing the wish game. But I'm kind of excited to finally be taking a look at Chinese watercolors manufactured theoretically for artists by a company that's actually serious about making art supplies for artists and isn't just trying to like need and just kind of trying to make a buck. Ah! I knew we'd get one. This isn't the worst packaging, to be honest. Um, I kind of think the the Windsor Newton and the Jane Davenport where you have like a paper wrapper and then it's wrapped in plastic is the worst and my favorite tends to be the foil with the printing but this is kind of nice too because I can just cut the front off and then stick it to the bottom instead of handwriting it which is what I normally do. And I know someone in the comments is going to say this, so I'm going to catch y'all before you do. These are not named after Pee Wee Herman. Yes, they're Paul Rubens. They're named after Peter Paul Rubens, the Renaissance painter, not Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> all right, it took me about 30 minutes, but I got all of, well, probably a little longer than that, actually, because there's 24 of these, and some of them went quick and some of them went slow. But I'm finally finished, so we can finally begin swatching. So I'm going to put away the very nice little cleaning microfiber cloth and the very nice box. And I guess I will just assume these are the actual real deal until I know otherwise. So I have here some fluid cellulose based watercolor paper. Okay. 
and I really like this for doing watercolor tests because it is not only affordable, um, it's pretty decent paper. It is block bound on two edges and uh, it just kind of helps me get a feel for the watercolors before I commit them to nicer papers. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do two lines. So I am, or two sections, so I am doing opacity tests at the top and at the bottom. And I'll give that a couple of minutes to dry out. And then after I've done that, I'll go ahead and do all my swatches on here. So this side, the left side corresponds to the top row. This side, the right side corresponds to the bottom row. There are no color names on this card. There are numbers and I did double check it. There are color names on the half pans themselves, especially since I actually cut out the, the wrapping and attached it to the bottom. So it makes things a little bit simpler for me. I'm also going to do myself a little bit of a favor. I'm gonna pre-activate these. It doesn't say one way or the other if I should, but most watercolors do benefit from having a chance to soak up a little bit of water, get those colors going. And to activate it, all you really need to do is put a couple of drops of water. You can spritz it with a spray bottle. You can brush over it with a brush like I'm doing. It's not, not a fancy thing, but it is a good thing to do. Okay, so they've had a chance to absorb water. I'm gonna begin swatching the top row now and they already seem thick and a little bit opaque, which means there's probably some filler, some optical brighteners. They're already starting to muddy my water and I'm two colors in, but they are very bright. So this might be exactly what you are looking for. I find that these sort of watercolors, the ones that use a lot of optical brighteners, tend to work really well for people who do one, maybe two layers when they do watercolor, rather than people like me who do m multiple layers. Oh my gosh, looks like I'm gonna run out of space. And you get a lot of colors, I always... So my personal watercolor collection is something like a little short of 48 pans. It might be, um, I just have to give in and go to the other side. It might be like 36 pans. And that's something I've assembled over, you know, eight years of painting. And I've got it kind of curated to like my favorites from each brand, that sort of thing. So when I buy watercolors to review, I will usually get a six color set or a 12 color set. I usually, or even open stock colors, I think I'll use. And then if I like them, those colors will go in my 36 piece set. The exception is with my Magello set. I like all the colors in my Magello set. So I just keep that all in one place. So this is the largest set I've reviewed in a while. I'm gonna have to do another pad as well. Cause I still have like four more colors and bright. I do think though there's some optical brightener magic going on here. I just call bluff. All right, I got an eight by eight pad. And all these watercolor tests would just not be feasible without the help and support and the kindness and the generosity of my art nerds over on Patreon. Their support allows me to purchase the consumables I need for these sort of reviews. I go through a lot of watercolor paper doing these and their support on Patreon allows me to be able to do these reviews and not be concerned too much about using up all my watercolor supplies since I do do watercolors for conventions like I just did MTAC. And I do do watercolors as part of my daily work. I do children's book illustration and I also illustrate a watercolor comic, Seven Inch Kara. So it would be terrible to have to completely raid my stash. So I really appreciate their support. And I really want to thank them for encouraging and supporting what I do here. Oh, that's right. So we have all 24 swatched. I'm gonna set these aside to dry and we're gonna do mass tone swatches over here on this. I have to work small because this is confined space. 
my Holbein watercolors and my Como Rebi watercolors came with a swatch card. I'll make my own if the kit I use doesn't have one out of just watercolor paper. I don't even label it because it's just a one-to-one -one map of where, what goes where, what each color looks like. And it's funny as talking about Patreon support, I literally used PayPal money from my Patreon to purchase the mat materials from my witch haul so I could review them for you guys. I actually kind of like these watercolors on their paper. I mean, they're not perfect, but they definitely have a charm. You can definitely think of applications where I would want to use these. They're very saturated colors. They would make for some great one layer watercolors. Often these sort of sets, which are designed for one layer watercolors or for like comic illustration, sort of like manga splash page illustration. Um, normally they have a skin tone and these do not. Okay, so I'm gonna let, I kinda wanna flip it into the other side, but that fold is so severe. As y'all can see, the colors start to flow. So I guess what I'm gonna have to do is let these dry and then do the other side. So something I'm noticing as these dry is that they are very brilliant when wet and then they are very dull when dry. And those of you who are familiar with my watercolor reviews know that tends to be the result of optical brighteners. That's something like adding talc or chalk to your paints so that they seem more brilliant in the pan, but they tend to dry really chalky. They layer really muddy. They're also a good way to kind of extend paint so that, you know, you actually need less pigment to fill the pan. And a lot of brands use these. It's not like the most uncommon thing. A lot of cheap brands use these. So, I mean, I like Soccer Koi a lot but they use optical brighteners, for example. So it's just something I mentioned, sort of like some people will mention a product having MSG in it because it can affect how you work and how you approach a painting. And I like kind of knowing what I'm getting into, which is why I do these swatch tests before I start doing like a field test. I like knowing what I'm getting into. I want you guys to know what you're getting into and if I haven't said it a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand and one. Wish is um, often a site of dubious quality and, ooh, that's the wrong color, dubious brands. Um, so if you're gonna go shopping on Wish, be it for art supplies or electronics, just be careful. You can really get burned. And I would recommend watching some like Wish unboxing videos here on YouTube. <laughs> I'm watching them for fun now because what the site promises versus what you get is often quite, it's quite a gap usually. So it's really funny to see people's reactions to what they've gotten on Wish. But I would just be careful. And it doesn't always have the best, best prices. Like I saw a five pack of Zebra Mod Liners, which they're a little hard to get here in the U.S. They're a little expensive here in the U.S., but they said $8 for five Mod Liners and that's not really a good price, so... Just keep that in mind that just because you see it on Wish and Wish is like kind of a deal site, kind of, sort of, you're not necessarily getting the best deal. So I'm going to use some washi tape and tape. Tape this puppy down. And I'm a, I apologize for like all the mic drop loud noises. My mic clip broke and I'm getting a new one. I repaired, well, I have kind of a stop gap going on right now and I'm getting a new mic clip, but it is not here yet. And I don't know how long it will take to get here. So rather than halt video production and get even really backed up with content, I'm just gonna kinda push on through. So I want these to dry flat because I want an accurate reflection or as accurate as I can of the colors inside this kit. So just tape it down. Probably should have done that to begin with, but peeling and taping all those packages kind of made my brain go numb. So I'm just not thinking properly. I'm gonna have a hard time with this sign. All 
right, so these swatches are almost dry, but they're not fully dry. I feel like you guys can kind of get an idea of how much they desaturate. They're actually a little more brilliant on this paper than they are on the fluid papers I used. But I hope this gives you guys a pretty good idea of what these paints look like. And I hope you guys will keep watching this channel, maybe even consider subscribing if you haven't already. I plan on doing a field test to put these watercolors to work really soon. And the only way you're gonna find out about it is by being subscribed. And uh, if you want notifications, make sure you click that bell button. So thank you guys so much for watching this unboxing swatch of Paul Rubens. Chinese watercolors, or rather watercolors made in China for a Chinese market. I've never gotten to really play around with Chinese watercolors before other than like Yasutomo's and Marie's. So this was a lot of fun for me and I really enjoyed it. And I really look forward to seeing how they handle in terms of um, a watercolor test. So I hope you guys will join me for that. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. If you guys like what I do, please consider helping support it by heading on over to patreon.com slash natosoup and finding out how you guys can become art nerds. All it takes is one or two dollars a month and you guys can help me continue to do this. And if you like my watercolor, even though this video is not very indicative of my watercolor, but if you like my watercolor, please take a moment and check out my beautiful all ages watercolor comic, Seven Inch Kara. You can find that for freezies at sevenincharacom and sevenincharacom So it was a pleasure unboxing and swatching for you guys today. I hope you guys will check out the rest of my wish haul videos and I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.